At the Deutsche Goldmesse, we have Chris Wright from Defiant Silver. Welcome, Chris. Thank you for having me. Yeah, last year, at uh, the same time, give it a take. What has happened in the one year? Um, lots has happened in a year, actually. It's been, uh, been very, very busy at, at site. You know, we've been doing lots of drilling. Uh, we've put out some very great results for, you know, they're very encouraging. We're looking forward to continuing to do that. Um, so yeah, very, very busy. Uh, the metal prices were a little bit tough for, for your crowd. Um, have you curbed your drilling or have you uh, gone full steam ahead? Well, full steam ahead, you know, we're, we're continuing it at, at our pace, which is how we did it before. And, you know, we were, um, you know, probably criticized for not being as aggressive as, as other companies and getting more drills on. And, but we always wanted to be very deliberate, very pragmatic about our, our approach. It's uh, very technically driven. So the data that we get in real time from the drilling that we're doing helps us with our targeting and, you know, how quickly and how many meters we want to drill. So um, that's worked out for us this year simply because we weren't going too quickly and we didn't have uh, you know, uh, you know, that large expense of having multiple drills going. Um, you know, commodity prices, equity prices, you know, the markets in general around the world have been very difficult since this time last year. Um, so everybody's feeling the pain and the fact of the matter is that you, you know, my belief is you need to protect the cash that you have and make the best use of it because uh, we're not sure exactly when this difficult time is going, going to pass. Yeah, hopefully soon, as we heard on this conference many times, multiple right. times from the experts. So you're protecting the cash. How much cash have you left and protected? Um, the end of this month, we'll have $10.3 million Canadian. So we have at least a year's worth of budget runway ahead of us. So, you know, we're not looking to raise money right now. Um, our work plan is fully funded. Um, in fact, you know, I think with um, the way that asset prices are, are depressed right now, it's probably an opportunity for companies to be looking to, you know, add to their, their property portfolios, you know, you know obviously at, at prices that make, make sense. Yeah, the, in one presentation, there was an anecdote of a company, I don't know which one, uh, that uh, made a capital raise uh, after the price has fallen, a uh, stock price from 120 to 1 cent or something like that. And uh, Eric Sprott sold uh, all his package. I don't know which, on which presentation. But uh, anyways, back, back to you. Uh, so you're looking actively for, uh, for acquiring something for the right price, if it happens? We're always looking. You know, we've had, we have a track record of consolidating you know, the camp in Zacatecas where we are. Um, you know, the company acquired Mag Silver's land package in the, in the camp in 2018. Um, in 2020, we signed an option agreement with Pan American Silver to acquire their, uh, their package in the camp. So it's something that's been uh, a successful strategy for us. And absolutely, if, if we can continue down that path, we will. But um, you know, there's always the cost benefit analysis, so it has to make sense for our shareholders. Yeah, so what, uh, what price of silver would, uh, would make you smile next year? <laughs> At this point, you know, anything higher than it is today. But um, you know, I, think that, I think the underlying fundamentals, the, the macro environment, you know, for commodities in general over the long term is still quite positive. You know, we're, we're going through, a, you know, a period now where, you know, every asset class has been hurt, you know, with the exception of possibly the US dollar. Um, and, uh, you know, that will work itself out. Um, and the reality is that the, the path that the world is on is, is going to be, you know, demanding more metals. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of the companies at this conference are in a good position to help meet that demand. Yeah, long term, the picture is very positive. That, right. uh, that's for sure. Uh, the problem is most of the shareholders, uh, uh, people on the market, have a very small horizon uh, with, with time. And uh, all the juniors lack uh, like often money. That's the problem. Yeah. But... Uh, so uh, let's uh, give it a take on 2024. What will we have? Silver price? What do you think? Two years from now? I, the one thing I do know for sure is that if I give you an exact price, I'm going to be absolutely wrong. So, but I, I see it higher, you know, to see it higher, you know, 20 to 
thirty percent from this point would you know would not surprise me. Which brings us to a thirty level. Yeah. Yeah, I could see high twenties, you know, maybe low thirties, and you know, I think you, for that to happen, you probably need to see gold move, you know, up through up well up through two thousand and. I guess it's a question when you, you know, I take a step back and I try to envision the catalyst that could lead to that, you know, timing, even over, you know, through to 2024, still a relatively short uh, time frame. And, and uh, a lot of the catalysts that will, will likely lead to, you know, higher gold price and, and you know, ultimately higher silver price are, are, you know, controlled, you know, largely now by central banks. And they've become, as much as they're trying to, for, you know, forecast their movements, I think, Maybe a little less predictable to to the investment world, just simply because I don't. I'm not sure there's a hundred percent buy-in into the messaging. Um, so it's a difficult difficult question. But no, I wouldn't be surprised if we were in the you know high twenties, low low thirties. So let's take 2024 silver price of 30. Define silver leverage to the silver price. What would be a fair value then? Well, look, you know, when we saw the, when we saw the, uh, the, the, you know, the precious metal stocks move aggressively out of, you know, I call the COVID crash in, in the spring of 2020, you know, um, we had, you know, our stock went up more than tenfold. So uh, from the lows, what we've achieved since then in terms of the quality of the offering we have in terms of the value proposition is significantly beyond what we had then. Um, you know, and on top of that, we're, we're in a much better financial position than we, we were then. So my belief is that if you get a strong move in the precious metal stocks again, you know, we would ultimately be, ultimately be targeting a move beyond, you know, what we, the prices we saw in that phase and, and, you know, who knows where we go from there. But, you know, what we can focus on today is moving our company forward, moving our assets forward, make sure that we, we take care of our shareholders. Uh, be good stewards of their capital and make sure that this company survives the difficult period. And then we're around to benefit from the good times. You know, um, our company historically had a lot of, a lot of leverage or torque to uh, underlying commodity price movements. I don't see why that would have changed. So for those investors who are looking to get exposure to this sector, I would urge them to, to put Defiant Silver on their list of companies for consideration and, and to do their homework. Uh, Ten Bagger has a very nice ring to it. Yeah, well, as they say, you know, past performance isn't the guarantee of future results. But uh, you know, that's history, and and it's happened more than once for for this company. So it has historically been a good place to gain exposure. Um, we hope to uh, be able to maintain that that uh, track record going forward. You're a major shareholder. Um, have you expanded your position on the free market since then, since last year? Um, you know, personally, I've been adding a little bit. Um, being such a large shareholder, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I always, you know, clearly I haven't been selling. So we have, uh, you know, full confidence in the, in the team and the assets. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always looking to, to add, uh, you know, when, when I can. Okay. So, I mean, the elevator pitch you have already given, why define silver 10 bagger possible leverage to the silver price? Um, have we forgotten something? You know, you're looking at a, a, you know, at a, at a, a company that's trading at, at pre-COVID levels. Um, we've you know, tripled our land holding in, in the Zacatecas camp. We've hit you know, uh, new, new discovery zones at our Lucita package that we optioned for Pan American Silver. We've hit the highest grade results um, it, that have been drilled in the camp in two decades. The highest grade that we've ever drilled, more than three kilograms per ton, you know, in some, in some, uh, um, in some hits. Um, you know, we have cash, you know, we're trading, uh, you, know, net, uh, you know, net enterprise value on, on the company is somewhere in the neighborhood of about 11 cents a share. Um, I just think that this is one of those times where, um, you know, it's, it's worth a, a good look. So, I mean, many people out there in the conference uh, told us this, this is the bottom. It's set, so let's hope it is. Uh, if it is, then uh, right now would be a good time to buy dirt cheap. I, you know, I tend to agree. Like calling the bottom is a, is a you know, a mugs game. It's very difficult to do. Um, but my sense is that we're definitely, if it's not already in, we're very close and may have a little bit of tax law selling left. But you know, in my experience, that's been a good time for uh, long-term investors to be sniffing around and, and buying stocks cheap. So I, I would agree. 
Okay. Thank you very much. Chris Wright, Define Silver. Thank you.